and welcome to the second part of the uh, theory of working with the air chain. So I will go about and tell you about some of the preparations which are necessary before we can start treating a person's air chain. Um, this is very much an ideal case which I will be describing because it can be that during your treatment you find out that some of the air meridians need some help um, so for minor changes you can just do it but if you really want to work on the air chi in the most yeah, perfect way it's good to follow this seven step program. So step one is actually uh, creating a healing space. Um, the first part of being able to work somewhere is in a way to make sure that you're undisturbed and this can be on a very physical level like closing the door, closing the windows, turning off your phone, making sure that no visitors will show up. And the same thing should be done energetically um, because we will be working with spirits and you don't want the wrong types of spirits to come and intrude or interfere in the process. So step one will be actually to close the space. Uh, typically this is done by making a circle on the floor around the uh, person you will be healing. It's also possible to do it in a slightly different way and uh, basically put boards on all the openings, so on every window, on every door, you put a ward so things cannot come true. Um, another option to work with is in a way to use the corners of the room as anchoring points, and then you put up, like you could say, a pillar of energy in every corner, and then you draw the curtains between those four pillars, also closing off the space. So ultimately it doesn't matter very much which technique you use to create a healing space as long as you use one of them. The most traditional is the use of the circle. Uh, the circle is typically made with salt, so you can just get some ordinary table salt or uh, sea salt and make a little circle around the person. Uh, if you're working outside where salt might be harmful for the plants, you can use flour instead. And it is very much the intention of creating a circle uh, which empowers it. It's not so much that it has to be made of salt or flour or anything else. You can also use stones or paint or even put uh, other things in, yeah, in a circular formation. Um, and this important is that there is enough intention, enough will to make the barrier a real um, yeah, barrier which exists in the astral world. So visualizing the barrier is very important. Also not just making the circle with only your hand but also with your willpower, with your feeling, feeling the energy of the circle and envisioning how it will be strong. So all your own energy centers need to be involved in creating uh, the barrier to heal, to close off your healing space. Um, if you're using wards, uh, you should war uh, ward, of course, all the entrances to the room. And it's important also not to forget that mirrors or mirroring surfaces are also doorways through which spirits can look into our world and can enter into our world. So if you're going to use wards, uh, also make sure that you ward all the mirrors uh, as well as the windows and the doors. Um, it's also not very useful if you create wardings in a space where the spirits are already inside or where there are objects where in which the, there are already spirits residing. Um, but step one is always to close off the space and then to clean it so that the things which you remove from the space cannot come back in. Um, using the four pillars and then creating a sheet of energy between the pillars. So you create like a little cube, a little box of energy within which you can work. The easiest way to do that is to use the life force which is naturally flowing uh, all around us. 
and just to um, bend it a little bit. So the life force is usually flowing um, yeah, on a horizontal plane. It more or less flows following the contours of the earth because most living things are between the ground and yeah, two meters up. So this is in a way a sea of life force in which we are, in which there are currents. And this life force can be shaped um, by using our willpower. Uh, it, it can also be sh shaped using elemental magic. And this way we can create pillars and we can use our breath to create sheets and in a way to pull the energy out of the pillar, out of the flow, to create sheets of life force to seal the space. So once that the space itself has been sealed, it's important to make sure that nothing will happen to it because every barrier can be broken. It's just a matter of time. So you can look upon it a little bit as a safe with a combination lock. And of course the safe will keep things out, but if yeah, other spirits can just twiddle with the combination lock, eventually they will hit on the right combination and be able to pass through. So the barrier delays intrusion, but it doesn't prevent intrusion. So just like a bank has not only a safe, but usually also a security guard or some other active security system, it's also very wise to do the same thing in your healing space, to have an active security guard. Uh, my personal preference is to work with gargoyles. Um, gargoyles are uh, spirits from lower dimensions who have devoted themselves to the service of um, higher creatures and to going on the path of light. Um, and because they are in a way natives of these lower dimensions, they can work with those energies, they know the local denizens, they know the parasitical spirits quite well, but they are no longer cooperating with them because in a way they recognize the light side as their new master, their new guide for their own uh, development, for their own progression. Uh, so gargoyles were used a lot by um, the uh, Catholic Church to uh, yeah, protect their places of power, their cathedrals. Um, another way to go might be to try to use nature spirits, but nature spirits tend to be a little bit more gullible. Um, they are more interested in helping and supporting rather than uh, fighting or uh, doing other things. So nature spirit is usable, uh, but I would prefer the gargoyle myself. And it's also possible to use ancestor spirits, because ancestor spirits also are uh, familiar with this world of wandering spirits looking for energies. And they also have, in a way, a different master. They're not looking for energies themselves, but are quite willing to offer protection. Um, besides that, you can always yeah, um, try to get some help from angels or deities. But usually they're not so inclined to do this kind of like menial work, standing guard. Um, angels and uh, divine beings are usually much more interested in offering guidance than uh, rather just patrolling to see if a parasitical spirit will come along. You can also ask your own guides to uh, yeah, provide some protection or to at least warn you or give off a signal when your space is being invaded so you can deal with it. Um, what I usually advise people to do is to um, kind of like talk with your guides on what type of signal uh, will yeah, uh, be their alarm bell. So it can, can be a headache or a beep in one ear or um, a tingling in the throat or yeah, some other very specific signal. And then I ask them to employ that signal a few times so that I can recognize it and that I will program it in my mind if I feel this or if my guides are doing this. This means that there is an intrusion within my healing space. I should deal with it. So, once we have the space closed, step one. Step two, provide 
uh, the guard to keep the healing space in a good way. And then we come to step three, namely making sure that we have enough guidance. Um, the guidance is also quite important if we're doing work which is in a way beyond our normal level of consciousness. We can work quite well with yeah, our own physical bodies, we are aware of them. Uh, we can learn how to work well with all the five elements because we can easily be aware of them. But when it comes to the higher dimensions, the astral world, it is often very difficult for us as incarnated beings to be aware of everything that is going on or happening in these worlds. Because in this location, in this world, location and time don't work the same way as they do in our world. So it is very easy to misinterpret things or to um, confuse things. Um, being in the astral, I compare a little bit to being in the ocean. So there's all kinds of currents and without noticing you can be carried off into a very different region. That now that we have created a healing space and we have also installed some guardians and requested some guidance for the process, we can start with the preparations of getting the space ready to work in. So the first thing to do is that we should improve the energy within the space. So this is a process of both uh, strengthening the energy there, charging the space, but also of um, creating a very uh, pure, clean energy field. So that the person can be very relaxed, can open up within the space, that they feel kind of safe as, in, as if they are in the womb. Um, these two things can be combined. So if you're working in a very shamanic fashion, it's very usual to ask for the earth to accept all the energies which are no longer needed in the space, to take them back into her bosom and for the earth to also give its energy and give its life-giving power to the healing space. And in this way we can create a very nice, earthy, stable healing space. It's also possible to work a little bit more astrally or elementally. So you can call upon the different elements um, or upon the um, uh, certain power animals which also can bring certain energies to the space. Um, don't forget also to always create a drain, uh, both in yourself, in the client and in the space. So that whenever there are energies which are no longer needed, they can leave the space. Because sealing a space has the advantage nothing comes in, but also nothing comes out, goes out unless you make an opening for the things to drain away out of the space. So this is always a very important process to ground yourself, ground the space, ground your client. Um, or to have an altar or another holy object which can guide the energies out of the space uh, if you're uh, if you're working with such objects um, so working with the healing space can be done pretty much in any tradition also within a christian tradition it's very impossible to do that and then you would usually be working with saints or um, some icons or a crucifix to help you to get rid of the energies which are no longer necessary but also to invite in energies and guidance which are yeah. good for the client and good for the process. What's also very important for healing space is that there is a lot of acceptance, there is a lot of harmony and ultimately the space cannot be much more harmonious than you yourself are um, because the space energetically is linked to the creator or the creators if you're doing it with the group. So take some time to harmonize yourself, to really connect all your chakras with each other so that you have a good inner communication. Um, also to work with all your uh, different chi's so that there's a kind of a balance of flow through your whole energy system. So 
with all the things which are stuck in you, not accepted by you, or your inner struggles, you can also yeah, leave your system, go into the space and ultimately go out of you or they can drain directly from your body into the ground so that all the pollution is gone. So before the treatment it can be very useful also to uh, clean your client a bit, at least clean the aura, so to get all the energies which don't belong to your client, pull them out of the aura and throw them into the space where they can drain away or grant the aura of your client directly so the energies can drain directly out of the aura into the earth. It's also possible to empower the healing space by using crystals, um, sacrifices um, such as for instance burning incense is a very nice one, sage, palo santo, sandalwood are some of my favorites. And they create a very nice comforting energy in the area, especially Palo Santo is very nice if you're doing a healing. So, in the next video I will talk a little bit about the process of making the connection with the spirit of your client so that you're in an optimal relationship to each other and can do the healing as best as possible.